For the past uh, seven years now, I've been filming a, a documentary that just keeps on growing and growing and growing. Uh, the, the first place we went to was Mexico, a, a place called Huautla de Jiménez. I don't know if you're familiar with it. Huautla de Jiménez was the village uh, where Maria Sabina was from. We got to hear a, a lot of stories and we got to learn a lot of things. And what slowly became clear is to which degree, like this, this influx of visitors, you know, had uh, completely destabilized, you know, which was basically a very small, very conservative, very far away village that had never really been visited by. Uh, this is the reason why the mushroom cult was surviving there, because it was truly so far. We went uh, basically very far away from Wautla, uh, several valleys. To another place, and over there we found a, a, a very wonderful man, a very old guy, Don Eligio, who gave us a um, Ololuiki seats. And um, I, I had that absolutely terrible night. There was there was a point really where I just I just gave up. I said like, okay, they they obviously know what they're doing. I don't know what is happening, and I'm just gonna put myself in the, in their hands. And at this point, I felt deeply, deeply, deeply white and deeply, deeply, deeply stupid, uh, really stupid. I felt really stupid about the questions that I've been making about my stupid documentary, about the stupid fucking ideas that I had in my head when, when I arrived there, about, about everything. I'd been traveling all over the world, and it was like the only part of the world that interested me were certain substances and the people who gave them. And the rest of the environment, the rest of the country, the rest of the trip, the rest of their neighbors, the rest of their history, the rest of their culture, the rest of their economy, the rest of their knowledge, all of this I was leaving out because, you know, my tunnel vision, it was like, just like, just only when they talk about plants did my ear perk up. I mean, I'm gonna say gringos because gringos are all the foreigners. Colonialism is, is the story of how the gringos uh, came to this continent and then they started to take everything. The overall effect is always the same. It's a slow eroding, you know. We take more and more and more and more. You know, first it was the natural resources. Then it was like their souls that they wanted and there was like, you know, missionaries coming. And I think the error is that we think that this colonialism has, has somehow ended, it's, all, it's, it's over and it's no longer happening, you know, because this already took place and they're now independent nations. But it isn't, it, it continues and the, the latest version of it, it's a cultural colonialism. That means that we, the gringos are moving inside their culture like they moved inside their land. The, the only thing with Grey Owl is that when he died, it was, it was discovered that his real name was Archibald Stansfeld Bellany. And he had been born in England, uh, and he was just an English guy who really wanted to be an Indian, and then he moved to Canada, and then he made up a fake story about himself to the degree where he actually married a real Indian woman. And he became super famous playing this image of the Indian that was the image of the Indian that everybody had in their heads. And he knew very well because he was a gringo. <laughs> so he knew what the gringos wanted the Indians to be like, and that's the role that he played with great success. This, this, this phenomenon of Native American spirituality, culture, elements, rituals, you know, without any Native Americans. This is not shamanism, this is traditional medicine, and this is not something strange or small or exotic. It's the medicine of the world. Two thirds of the world get treated by traditional, by, by traditional doctors. To the great majority of the world goes to traditional doctors just like that. We think it's exotic. What is exotic is guys in white coats, 
you know, magnetic resonance, you know, and nuclear medicine. That's fucking exotic. That's a rarity. I mean, that's real magic in this world, you know. Traditional medicine, it's, you can find it in every last village of, of every corner of the world. And 500 years ago, that's all there was. There was no white coy guys. It was all traditional medicine, you know. So we think we're discovering something, you know. And the only thing we're discovering, once like the tunnel bishop drops, is how the rest of the world lives and goes to the doctor. You know, the, the, training, the training to be a curandero is not a training to learn Icaros. It's a training to be the kind of person that can put up with, uh, with sick people day in and day out. And, that, and you need a training for that because you're going to have to cure people that you don't like. You're going to have to cure people that are really sick. And you're going to have to deal with people that you really want to send home. You know, they will happen. People will come to you saying like, and they will come with like nasty shit, really nasty shit that they made to themselves or that other people did to them. You know, and you don't want to treat these people. But you have to, and this is the training. The training for the curandero is how to be strong enough to actually do this. Now, when you're strong enough to do this, when you have this build up, then the songs, the tricks, the effects, these all come by themselves because they're just outside manifestations of something that is already inside. But because we think we can grab things, you know, we go and we try to like learn the Icaros. We're trying to grab things that cannot be grabbed. So we end up with simulacrums, you know, with fake, with, with empty forms. Some nights ago, I had this vision of this, of this car, you know, and somebody had taken the body of the car and the wheels and the chairs and everything, everything except the engine. And they were sitting inside this car, you know, and they were going and the car wasn't moving because it had no engine. But they had drunk ayahuasca, and they thought that the car was moving, you know? And this is the danger, that if you take the empty shape and you drink ayahuasca, you will think that the car is moving. You will think that something is happening. You will think that you have it. And what you have, it's an empty form, and you have no engine, and you have no engine. I mean, if you can't be a nurse, if you can't be a social worker, you can't be a curandero, you know? But we think, you know, and I'm, I'm guilty of this. I mean, I was, I was there myself. I had all sorts of ideas and thought instincts and inspirations that it was coming and arriving to me, you know? We think, you know, because at least in my case, I came from taking drugs, that this was going to be like even better. It's going to be like the cool guy that has all the drugs and invites everybody, but even cooler. Because it's like, well, it's got some like, you know, indigenous, uh, shine over it. Please, please, please be very careful. If you're going to enter other people's culture, you know, try to walk on your tiptoes. Try to be a fly on the wall, you know. Try to shut your mouth and open your eyes. And try to be careful. We, are, we can be spotted 500 meters away. We stand out like a sore thumb, you know, with the fucking ridiculous sneakers, the shorts, you know, the hair like this, the big bills, you know. We're standing in the middle of the rituals and we are like so different, you know. And, we, and out of ignorance, we, can, we are likely to do all sorts of stupid shit that we shouldn't do and all sorts of very disrespectful things, you know. Just, and it's out of ignorance. So all of a sudden, you're in a situation where certain things that wouldn't normally fly have to fly because this guy is going to give you, in, for one evening, five times the amount of money that you would make working in a week, maybe. You know, that's how it goes. So then, this very thing that fascinates us and this very thing that we want to protect and this very thing that we want to, like, maintain a life and that seems to be in danger, we are actually, by our interest and by our influx of money, we're slowly eroding.